Hello everyone. In our previous video, we developed the formulae for velocity and acceleration in the polar coordinate system. And now it's time to put our skills to the test by understanding circular motion. The circular motion you see all around us, like the motion of a fan, wheels of a car, children uh, going in a merry-go-round. But what's really important in this video is that we learn how to use these equations in a practical example. So what is circular motion? A motion which goes in a circle, <laughs> that's obvious. But what does it mean a bit more rigorously? Well, a circle, you see, is, is this is what a circle looks like. And all these points are at an equal distance from point what we call the center. So all of them are at the same distance from this point. That is if I draw this line or this line, you measure them, you will get the same answer. So a circle is an object, is a shape in, for, in, of which all the points lie at equidistant from the center. So let me mark the radius by r. And in circular motion, the particle is constrained to move on this path at a constant distance away from some point. Now, in physics problems, you are given a system and what you do is, you choose a coordinate system in a particular orientation which helps you solve that problem easily. So it makes a lot of sense to put our coordinate system right at the center. So, this is our origin and let us say here we have this particle, this is the position vector of this particle, this is the angle which makes with the x-axis, okay. So, we will be using polar coordinates, this is uh, this uh, position vector and this is your theta. Now, this position vector can be written as uh, r, this r, r cap, this is the direction of r cap. Now, notice this length is the magnitude of your position vector. And if a particle is moving at a circle, that means the distance from the origin, that is the magnitude of your position vector is constant okay and in this situation it's equal to this capital r so the magnitude position vector is equal to the radius which is constant now by constant we mean that doesn't change with time okay so no matter how fast your particle is moving if it's on the circle if it's moving on the circle then this is guaranteed to stay fixed okay so it doesn't change with time so dr by dt okay or you can call it r dot is 0 okay now using this result uh, we'll put it in r the in velocity and acceleration formula and let us see what we get so we get v as r dot is 0 so there is no component in the r cap direction this term is 0 we have r theta dot theta cap okay and let's put r dot equal to 0 in, a, in the formula for acceleration we get r double dot as 0 because r dot is a constant and if you differentiate it again you will also get 0 so this is 0 Okay, we left with minus r theta dot square r cap plus 2 r dot theta dot. So, r dot is 0, this term goes away. And you are left with r theta double dot theta cap. The theta dot is the rate of change of theta with respect to time. It is also written as omega okay your angular velocity how fast this 
theta change. So, let us draw some vectors to understand what this really stands for. Okay. So, velocity vector, all of it is along theta cap direction. There is no component along r cap direction. Okay. So, this is your velocity vector and its magnitude is r theta dot or we can call it r omega. So, at an instant, if I give you the angular velocity of the particle or theta dot, okay, and I ask you to uh, find its velocity, you have to, it's r theta dot, okay, or in this case, since r is the same thing as capital R, the magnitude of this velocity is, is r omega. in the th theta cap direction theta cap is perpendicular to r cap direction in this case this is tangent to the circle so this velocity is along the tangent having a magnitude of r omega and what about the acceleration so if you see acceleration has two parts one along the minus r cap direction you can recollect this in this form This means that your acceler R cap C R cap is pointing out of out of the circle away from the center minus R cap will point towards the center. So you have this much of your acceleration is towards the center, okay? And since this is towards the center, you can call it uh, the radial acceleration, okay? Since it has a magnitude r theta dot square okay on r is capital r so r omega square or omega square r inwards okay and this term comes from the fact that your omega om, omega or your angular velocity can change okay theta double dot is d square theta by dt square or d omega by dt so if your angular velocity is changing with time then you have this term then you, it means you have a component along theta cap direction now if your angular velocity if your particle is moving rotating faster it's speeding up then your angular velocity will increase with respect to time therefore this means that your d omega by dt will be greater than zero so if this theta, theta double dot, okay, this is the same thing as theta double dot. So if theta double dot is greater than zero, this term will be positive, which means you have a component in the positive theta cap direction. Okay. And similarly, if it's slowing down, then uh, your d omega by dt is lesser than zero. This means you have a component on the minus theta cap direction but the magnitude is r omega sorry r d omega by dt r theta double dot in the theta cap direction and since this is along the tangent to the tangent to the path we can call it tangential acceleration along the theta cap so the net acceleration is sum of these two, the radial part and the angle, tangential part. So let us say uh, this is your angular, sorry, tangential acceleration. The net acceleration would be this vector plus this vector. So you shift this vector and you get something like this. Okay, this vector will be your net acceleration, this vector. Okay, so this is a, again a very general case which we have only one constraint that it's moving in a circle r dot is 0. Now we can study another uh, very special class of circular motion that is uniform circular motion. So what does it mean to be in uniform circular motion? 
well in uniform circular motion your speed okay the distance that you cover in a given interval of time that remains constant okay say you say a particle is here okay and then it moves a distance let's call it l in some time t okay so this is the theta how much it moves so how much your l changes with respect to time that quantity should remain constant okay dl by dt your speed okay distance change of distance with respect to time should remain a constant okay but what is l your path length your arc length in this case it is r theta okay where theta is in radians okay that's how you started with the radian system so you just plug this in you get r d theta by dt as a constant i have pulled out out of the differentiation because r is constant it's a, it is a radius of the circle okay so which gives the theta dot d theta by dt which is the same thing as omega is also constant so constant divided by constant is also constant now if your uh, theta dot is constant which means your d theta dot by dt is zero or theta dot theta double dot is zero they are they are the same thing just change of notation okay so this means that we need to uh, eliminate all the terms involving theta double dot so in velocity you don't have any terms in theta double dot so the velocity remains the same okay so that's how your velocity will look in the theta cap direction has it has a magnitude r omega okay r omega what about the acceleration so for acceleration you have this minus r theta dot square is constant will uh, will, will is the same in both cases okay since the double dot is zero this tangential term will go away so this is what you are left with r theta dot square okay and this means all of your acceleration points inward omega square r okay theta double theta dot square is omega square and uh, r is capital r minus sign indicates towards the center okay, this is the this is the center in a previous case when you had a uh, theta double dot not equal to 0 when you had some uh, non zero theta double dot okay it was either your angular velocity was either increasing or decreasing this is how your net acceleration vector looked like okay not along the radial uh, the radius but as you reduce this component or this component whatever this will slowly and slowly it looks like this it will slowly and slowly come down to come down entirely in the minus r cap direction so in this case this is the net acceleration also so how does uh this look well this is your velocity at one instant r omega this is your velocity at another instant okay the same magnitude just shifted a little bit okay this point is slightly ahead of this 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 one okay and since your acceleration points in the direction of your change of velocity vector this is your acceleration vector okay acceleration times uh, dt vector basically acceleration times dt but yeah the key thing is that 
it points towards the center the best part is that you can extend this method okay this usage of polar coordinate systems and this formula for velocity in uh, many other systems okay where you don't directly see a circle but the particles are moving in a circular motion for example take a rigid body okay this is not perfectly rigid but yes a, it's a good enough example okay and let us say it's rotating about this axis okay this one starting from this point right to this one and i rotate it with a constant angular velocity something like this now all the points okay if you measure from uh, distances from this point all the points are moving in a circular motion okay take this point right take this point image right over here okay so if i rotate it you can see that it's move completing a circle okay with and if i draw a line like this this will be its radius and if i want to find the velocity of this point i can find the angular velocity of this entire book and multiply it with the radius this r and i'll find the velocity and this technique is used many many times when we study dynamics of these bodies called rigid bodies where distance between two points doesn't change so that's all for circular motion thanks for watching